Hello everybody, let's continue. Uh, we are building an RC car with our ESP32 uh, using uh, Rust. And today I want to get into servos a little bit. Uh, I did one about servos before using the IDF framework that was pretty straightforward. Uh, and I thought getting a servo to work on the uh, on bare metal using embassy and all the other stuff would be completely trivial and it wasn't uh, it's not terrible and some things were maybe a bit silly of my part but i thought well that's good enough to make a bit more in-depth uh, tutorial on this one so uh servos uh they have been around for a long time uh, i remember they were like this when i was a child so around 40 years ago, uh, they were pretty much identical on the face of it. So uh, it, it's not new technology, it is analog technology basically. And uh, the crux here is how you control the servo and you control it with a, a, a protocol called pulse width modulation. And uh, we have, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty common. And what that means is this, this, this is a uh, Wikipedia by the way, uh, this picture explains it. You have a, a cycle and for servos it tends to be around 50 Hertz. Uh, so uh, yeah, 50, the, every, this pattern repeats uh, 50 times per second. So one of these patterns is around 20 milliseconds. And a certain time of that 20 milliseconds, the signal is high and the rest is low. Uh, there is a um, so that's actually quite similar to how you use dimming or multicolor LEDs. Uh, we did that not so long ago, um, but there are some differences, as in um, for for LEDs, what causes the brightness to change is the percentage, in a sense, right? So the more there's high of this. Uh, the brighter the LED, and if it's pretty much all low, li like in the lower one, it, it will be very dim. And uh, frequencies are typically much higher, which is often like several kilohertz. In essence, the frequency doesn't matter that much for LEDs, because like if, if it's a m more than 50, then you won't see the flickering. Uh, so uh, yeah, for all uh, intents and purposes, it doesn't really matter. For servos, it kinda does. Um, it's uh, if this if the frequency is too much off the 50, it just won't work at all. Uh, and also, as far as I understood, the the position of the servo is absolute. So in this case, we have a um, uh, uh, thousand, two thousand, fifteen hundred. If the if the frequency would fluctuate a little bit then it wouldn't really change anything. So uh, depending on the servo, some servos are more lenient than others, but bear that in mind. Uh, so uh, one way to uh, get that working is by simply writing a loop and uh, setting the, setting the uh, a pin low or high. So let, let, let's do that. Uh, so uh, to get started, let's uh, ESP template, we generate project name ESP32 servo, a C3, uh, let's have a look at advanced options, let's do alloc, why not, uh, no dev containers, uh, no walkery, no github actions, let's do the logging, no Wi-Fi. And that should do it. There's no demand. Code here. Uh, and make this full screen. So we have a, a, a single loop, and uh, yeah, nothing too exciting going on here. Uh, we have. So first of all, we need to do the, the, the standard things. So we need to create a IO. This IO new. Uh, yeah, 
think it's yeah peripherals pins I think yeah the autocomplete doesn't work yet so uh, I'll need to give it a moment oh, yeah, GPIO uh, and then um, uh, IO max I get this out of here. Talking about Maven. Uh, and then I guess we need to import something. Oh, that is funny, by the way. Uh, it's surprised it updated to 14 since the last time I checked, so that's nice, but it doesn't rename it as hell which uh, huh. it's an unexpected change um, I wonder if it's intentional or not but uh, for us right now it doesn't really matter so uh, now we need to uh, get a pin and I am going to use uh, pin 19 pins GB 19 something like that uh, and let's do into uh, push pull output so as an output we can set to high and set to low and it will stay wherever it is um, so let's uh, make a loop so I well, we already have a loop and we already have the delay so that's good so let's just uh, set it let's have a look at this one so uh, the left one if you all the way to the left is uh, 1000 microseconds and all the way to the right is 2000 microseconds so let's uh, set to left uh then we say uh we do that for let's say one second so one second and uh, that means that we have to do uh 50 uh iterations zero to 50. so we do this 50 times uh so we need to say pulses and we started with uh, to the left so that was I guess uh, 1000 yeah so we set the pin to high I need to make a mutable uh, servo pin set high then uh, and we unwrap then we delay uh, for microseconds, so 1000. And then uh, I think you need to, oh, okay, U32. Then um, we set it too low again, and then we delay again because the total of this of this block must last 20 uh, milliseconds so we set it low then and then we wait for 19,000 microseconds and then we end up quite close to uh, 20 milliseconds so that's 50 times this whole thing should last one second uh, then we'll do the same again but now we will change the uh, change the uh, timing so now we say 2000 so this one becomes 18,000 so the sum is again the same I think that this looks kind of okay now let's get to uh, my little setup uh, right here let's see. Uh, yeah, this is all right so what I did uh, I set up uh, 
point of some kind. I have my ESP32 right here. Uh, I wired it to a servo, a mini servo, quite small. Um, this, the yellow wire, is connected to the pin 19 I mentioned, and that goes into the servo here. And uh, uh, I created this right rail, it's not really connected directly to the ESP32. Well, the, the ground is. Uh, and I feed that with my uh, uh, power supply. Servos that are this small, you can usually power through your uh, ESP32 as well, and USB, by, so over USB essentially. Uh, with bigger servos, it's, it's, it's not a great idea, but for this one it seems to work, but uh, I'll use my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, power supply anyway. So let's see if our thing works. Uh, we are right here, uh, ESP flash, see if it's connected, and I'll power on my uh, power supply, so it should have juice now. Uploading. So, as you can see, it the the timing seems about right, but it's not at all the fuel the full range of the servo. So I think we can uh, increase it a little bit more. Uh, so maybe start with. 500 and this one like this maybe something like that let's see what that does yeah now it has a, around its uh, official uh, 180 degrees. So sometimes you can hear that it tries to move far farther than it can, uh, and then you should uh, back off a little bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if there is a, a a reliable way, especially with those cheap servos, to figure that out without just trying. All right, so that works. I'll stop it for a moment. Um. Yeah, so that works, right? There's no denying that it works. Uh, but this is a lot of busy work for your uh, a microcontroller because it, as it stands here, uh, it would, uh, yeah, now it's not doing anything else, but usually you have more stuff to do than just uh, pushing a pin up and down. So uh, we would like to delegate that whole duty cycle that switching on and off to a, to a special component that just keeps doing that. And we can do that. Uh, uh, the ESP32 has specialized hardware we can use for that. And that's called Let's See. Uh, that's right here. And that is actually meant for LEDs. So you can uh, change the intensity of LEDs. And, and we did that a few episodes ago. Um, but there were some uh, 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 some complications there. So the ESP32 just generally has eight channels. I think the C3 has only six. But uh, yeah, that's that's enough. Uh, and for that, we need to uh, configure uh, a timer. So a timer with a certain frequency. In our case, 50 hertz is important. For the LEDs, it doesn't matter that much, but for, for this it does. We need to have a channel and from the channel we can set uh, the duty cycle from zero, so low all the time, to 100%, uh, so high all the time. And we connect that to the uh, GPIO. 
Uh, so that's very similar as what we did before. Let's, uh, let's have a look. So we remove this loop for now. We do want to have the servo pin. And to, uh, to get this to work, we need to start by uh, creating an uh, LEDC component, I suppose. So we call it like this and we go from here. Uh, that's, I think, this one, I think, <laughs> new. Um, and then we need to get this one from peripherals. And we need to have a clock control. And that's uh, created by the, the template. So that should be straightforward. I think we need to reference it. All right, so that's that's one thing. So that's kind of uh, um, global. I think we need to set the the, the slow clock uh, to uh, clock source, and this this is the only possible uh, uh, value. So I, I think it depends on the exact hardware you have for the C3. I don't think there are any other options. Okay, so next thing is that we need a timer. So we can use the timer to control multiple LEDs, but the timer has just one frequency. So if we want to uh, control more than one servo, we can use one timer because we set that clock then to um, 50 hertz. But if we want to control that and do something else, like creating a sound wave or something like that, then we probably need to use separate ones okay so let's create a, a a channel and we can do that by getting a channel from the let's see component uh, we need to have a number uh, so that's uh, uh, i think that's a number yeah the, <laughs> oh my god Yeah, that's the one. So it is tricky though. There are a lot of uh, types that happen that are so uh, they're all over the place. So it's kind of easy to uh, uh, to get something from the wrong package, and then you'll struggle a little bit. This is our servo pin. So and we should assign it to something. Channel. Okay, I think that looks about right. Um, we need to create a timer. Let uh, timer. Uh, and then we get that as also from the let's see. Uh, and that's a different one. So then we need to get uh, Timer. Oh, there it is, I think. Let's see if that works. I don't think I got that right. Uh, uh. This one. This is definitely the timer. Oh, wait, wait, getting there. Yeah, I think this is the one. Timer zero. So that's something that worked. Uh, then we need to configure it. 
it's kind of, kind of like the uh, sort of builder pattern so config timer config indeed and then we can just create it and then what do we have all right so first of all uh, what's it complaining about right it added the bracket the vs code thing okay what's wrong here yeah i'll get to that um so duty so let's start just putting it to zero because it's uh, we'll uh, power it up later uh, is it why would it be unreachable uh, let's see what's the first one that's probably we need to uh, uh, find the proper type duty ah yeah okay so this is not uh, not the, the duty duty value this is the duty resolution and um, so it ranges from 1 till 14 bits uh, I have learned uh, first of all if if the frequency gets really high uh, you're you can't use all the resolutions anymore and then you'll get the runtime error that's saying that like this uh, illegal resolution illegal frequency for this resolution uh, i have also learned that it can be too low uh, so there are re there are uh, 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 if you have a lower resolution i ended up i think with 8 bit because i thought yeah that should work but then it just didn't because the frequency was off and it's really hard to tell i don't have a scope but uh, uh, the frequency wasn't just 50 it was more than that but i didn't know because uh, i'm human and i can't really see the blinking uh, so in any case um, frequency needs to be 50 uh, 50 hertz i suppose need to import something um, I guess I can just import this oh, I already had that so what did it exactly say oh it's about this one so i'll say just this is a u32 and this one can be removed mm. so we have configured the timer uh, i think this is about right um, but then uh, let's see we need to create a loop so that will also remove our compile error and what is wrong here and we need to add a type annotation here which is fair enough important things uh, output pin that should be all right and what is the second one the other one times oh yeah, that's 
low speed. I have never seen high speed. I'm not sure what what it means actually. Uh, so. So that's the timer. Then we need to configure the channel. Configure. And then again, we need to get it uh, config. This one. Uh, yeah, it did the same thing with the extra brace again. Channel config config. Mm. So let, let's uh, Let's see what's exactly going on here. So probably we can, if we just add the right types here, it will disambiguate. Uh, frequency, no, this is not the right config. So we'll just qualify it here. That's honestly, that messes with me quite often that you have so many things with the same name. Yeah, now it's happy. Okay, so the timer, we need to pass in the timer or a reference, I'm not sure. Uh, all right, and I probably need then to unwrap this one. Let's see. Oh, wait, something happened here. Okay, so I need to save this and then uh, configure this separately. Works for me. Um, and then, yeah, and then I need to reference it. So this is the duty percentage. Let's start at zero for now. Uh, pin config. Uh, I kind of forgot what that is. Let's see, it's a, a, I guess it's an enum of sorts. There it is. Okay, push pull, yeah, we did that. Okay, so that's a lot of boilerplate. Never said it was gonna be easy. Um, so now we have this channel and now we can do something with that channel. Um, so what we need to uh, uh, think about is that uh, we are using only a very small part of the of the duty the, the duty range. So the duty range goes from zero to one hundred percent, but uh, we can only use a few, right? So uh, as we did before, we had like. Uh, 500 out of the 20,000 so and the maximum uh, of uh, a bit over 2,000 so it, it is uh, yeah it, it's a small range so um, what we will need to do is to really uh, to calculate our ranges because right now there is a there is a way to set the the channel to uh, set duty, right? 
and we set it to a percentage which is uh, uh, a u8 so 0 to 100 I suppose but that's that is very little resolution there are only a handful of values that are actually valid for a servo so that is, is not really great so we need to uh, uh, recalculate that because we can set the duty and we use the the hardware method and then we can set, use uh, unsigned 32 and that goes all the way from zero to uh, the max of 14 bits uh, so that's uh, where did we configure that one uh, yeah, here, right here. So the 14 bits, so that's uh, two to the power 14, so that's 16,384. So a bit over 16,000. So then we have enough resolution to, uh, to actually uh, make this work. Um, so let's uh, try to do something similar as what we did before. Um, but then we need to do that calculation, right? So first let's um, define, I'll just create some variables, uh, mean duty, uh, and this will just start with our range. So uh, in, uh, in microseconds max duty is uh, like the, the things we kind of figured out here um, so that means that uh, uh, let's make it const mm, that's not correct what I did just there uh, Uh, so our range, so between the minimum and the maximum, I'm not sure, am I allowed even to do that? I don't think, I don't think I am. Let's just make it into a regular variable. You could also use this uh, as a, as a type. So it, it will get uh, done at compile time. So range, well, we can, it's 2000, but uh, in, in any case. So then we have like the max, the, the, the let's call it duty space. So that's two to the power of 14. Um, and then we need to, uh, uh, do a calculation to figure out where we will end up. So we will need to choose a percentage. So let's uh, start here. So let percentage is zero for the time being. Uh, and then we will need to do the we need to calculate the, the duty cycle. So uh, let duty equals the minimum duty. We just uh, described. So if we have zero percent, we will need to start there, and then we will uh, multiply the range um, times the percentage and then we divide by 100 because it's a percentage right so now we have a, a, a value that will uh, scale across that that space um, and then we will still need to uh, um, we think we need to convert that to 
the uh, the clock resolution. So we need to create absolute duty, something like that, uh, and that's uh, duty times uh, the the duty space. So that's the and divide it by the cycle time uh, and the cycle time must be in microseconds so let's say const cycle time uh, we could hard code it but uh, let's uh, make it official so we take one million divided by the frequency yeah, let's go all in. And const for frequency no, is 50, 50 hertz. Uh, divided by cycle time. If I am not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then I think we could um set the value to that let let's put this little thing in the, in the function for now calculate duty uh, that uh, takes in the percentage and returns 32 uh and then we just move this code here. Uh, yeah, and then these constants we can move out to the top. And which one are we still missing? The range. Uh, we can. I want can can you do that? Just uh, I wonder. I think we can. Okay. Uh, so range is now capitalized, and the duty space. Uh, yeah, we can also make that into a constant. Space. All of these are uh, not dependent on anything. Oh, maybe uh, ambiguous numeric type. Well, we can fix that. Cool. Let's see if that did anything useful. So, um, if all is well, we can uh, say channel dot set duty hard were and put in calculate duty and we say, for example, zero. Do we need to unwrap? No, we don't. Uh, delay. Uh, Delay uh, let's say millis half a second that's wrong. And let's uh, do a few. So twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, and then go back up. Well, 
let's see what that does uh, clean up some warnings and wrap wrap doesn't need to be into I suppose yes okay Let's see. Power up again as well. So now you see the rhythm of the all, all the steps, and then the, it rewinding again uh, back out. So it is a lot of. A lot of stuff right you need to know uh, and that's I think not too pretty of, of this uh, of this uh, situation you can wrap it into something uh, a bit more palatable uh, I created a little uh, a, a sort of wrapper for it uh, and that looks something like this. So you can create a, a struct of servo, and then you uh, pass in those those uh, uh, constants I, we mentioned basically, and then you in, implement a, a set percentage where you can say something between zero and hundred, but that will be zero and hundred of the valid range of the of the servo and not of the whole uh, duty cycle and then it will just do the same things so that's a little bit nicer and then if you were to utilize that uh, I think I commented most of it out uh, yeah so you create a servo and you uh, supply it with the ranges and then you can just do that you still need to do the configuration of the timer and the channels and, and whatnot but at least you don't uh, have to sprinkle this kind of calculations all over the place uh, so it's 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 a small win but i don't think it's really worth to publish it as a crate or something like that but uh, uh, i will uh, publish this thing anyway so yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Um, so uh, yeah, what I mentioned before is that uh, for that resolution, the duty here, take as much as you can get. If you, It will fail if you pick too high, but it will also fail if you pick too low. And, and that uh, caught me off guard. That and, and like I was really like at a loss why it didn't work because I tried um, the, the way before with just the loop and just making the pulses then it worked fine so the servo was working but somehow it didn't when I was using like this and what ended up being happening is if I understand correctly that it just does a division and if uh, the distance is too big then the frequency will just be higher and yeah how do you notice that the frequency is higher than 50 Hertz uh, if you don't have a scope you're just not gonna so uh, then I tried like 30 Hertz on the LED and then I thought then I should see the flashing and I didn't uh, so um, yeah you have to make it somehow visible to to humans and uh, that, yeah that, that took me a long time mm. and furthermore if you use an external uh, power supply you need to make sure that you uh, connect the 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 ground of the ESP32 with the ground of the servo, and I forgot that, and I'm not sure if that's really bad for the for the for the hardware. But I fooled around for a while, and then it's just randomly flailing about. So uh, uh, yeah, don't do that. 
but uh, yeah, uh, the 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 car is coming along nicely. Got some uh, stuff in. I'm 3D printing like crazy. So uh, let's see uh, where we end up. But uh, yeah, this this was my uh, my servo special. Uh, I hope it was useful to you. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye.